have a dream that one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident. Hey guys, it's Eric here. And in this video, I'll be talking about racism in Ireland with Sandrine Uwasa Ndahiro. Sandrine is an English PhD student in the University of Limerick. Her research centers on third-generation African writers, such as Afrofuturists, who have emerged during the era of late liberalism and who have introduced multiple and nuanced perspectives for reflecting on African lives and aspirations. She recently co-produced a documentary entitled Unsilencing Black Voices, which details personal stories and accounts from members of the black community in Ireland. Sandrine's work highlights the lived experiences of the black and Irish community. Only recently, she published an essay titled Irishness Does Not Equal Whiteness to this effect. Sandrine, like previous guests I've had on my channel, is a panelist on Gorm TV. She's a brilliant thinker and is greatly contributing to our national conversation about racism and the direction we take our modern, diverse Ireland towards. I really hope you enjoy watching this conversation and take something from it. Without further ado, here it is. Hey guys, it's Eric Oza here and I am back with another video. And I'm so happy to say that in this YouTube video, I am joined with Sandrine. <laughs> Hi everyone. Now, welcome to the video, Sandrine. I'm so happy to have you on board. And as you can all probably tell from the title, in this video, we're going to be talking about racism in Ireland. Of course, racism ever since the ascendancy of the Black Lives Matter movement in Ireland has been a massive kind of talking point and topic. And you know, from my perspective or from how I see things, racism wasn't necessarily a, an issue that we talked about very frequently in Ireland. The communities and the people who contacted and were affected by racism always talked about it within their in circles. But when it came to interacting with members of the wider Irish society, it was something that you're met out to feel delusional if you spoke about, or you, know, you, you, you sometimes felt as if you were simply criticizing good humor and the crack anytime you spoke about racism in Ireland. And it was people who spoke about it were somewhat gaslighted and sometimes muffled until the BLM movement was kind of exported into Ireland. Um, I think that really liberated a lot of people and gave them permission to speak about racism. So in your eyes, Sandrine, what do you think the extension of the BLM movement, the Black Lives Matter movement to Ireland signified for Ireland when it comes to talking about and fighting racism? Yeah, no, I think you made a really good point, like in regards to like how BLM is like something that was fundamentally started in the US. And I think when I remember when I watched with George Floyd and I don't know, like it's bad to say, but like, I remember being like, at least it's there. And then but then there was something which was like in the air where it was like, no, you, I can't say that anymore. Like I really have to instead of posting about it on Instagram and just being like oh yeah BLM like I really need to delve into it so I think when that happened last year it pushed me to like stop looking at it as an American issue and really start talking about racism in Ireland because like as you stated before yeah I talk about it to my family or like my close friends but never out in public or never my social media like again I think like it was one of those th days like when I was like I think even with my small following like I kind of everyone was like oh like she's black I was like yeah because it was just the first time that I've ever really talked about it and I think it just wasn't for me it was like for everyone else like do you know where again like we'd experience racism but then it's like you brush it aside and, like as you said it's a part of the do you know like the culture of like oh you're sure you'll be grand like they don't mean it that way and stuff like that so it really like when it came to Ireland it just stopped excusing those behaviors stopped excusing racism and made people which have been victimized racism talk out about it and stop using America as a scapegoat like that's the first thing that I would say like it made us like really look deep down and be like why are we not talking about it in Ireland like it affects us too like yes not to the same extent but it still affects us so it really pushed for that but I think the beautiful thing about it was that it wasn't just down to black people I think it was it did expose that conversation and that need to tackle racism within the different communities the different ethnic minorities which 
experienced racism as well. So I think like that's where it really departed from like the original message of America and the fact that I don't know if it's because we're like a small country, but it really did like, you know, you had people from the Asian community, traveler community, all engaging on all of these discussions to do with racism. And again, it moved it was pushed and moved beyond just it being an issue that affects black people. So like it kind of really steered that much needed conversation where we could no longer look at America and be like, oh, well, at least it's not, it's only happening there. We really, really were forced to, and I just say like liberated, liberated to talk about it because if you weren't that you were part of the problem. Absolutely. That was so well said, Sandrine. I think um, the BLM movement's rise last year definitely convinced our country that racism definitely exists within our shores, and it's an issue that we can't shy away from. But I think something that is somewhat unfortunate about the conversation we're having about racism right now is the fact that I think we're stuck in the wrong phase within that conversation. Instead of having a conversation about the methods we can utilize to tackle racism, the ways we can comfort communities and people who are impacted by racism, as you said, the Asian community, the Black Irish community, the traveling community, it seems like we're merely questioning the existence of racism, which is something that is well established at this point. All the research and all the data in Ireland and evidence suggests that racism does exist and is a problem. Irish Human Rights and Equality Commission, the Economic Social Research Institute, have done ample studies and they've all shown racism as a problem. Yet it seems that the wider society is not yet willing to admit the fact that racism is a problem. And this is something that I, I kind of explored in a piece I wrote recently, where I said, it seems like our nation is in a state of delusion or we're just so unwilling to admit that racism is a problem. Maybe it's because of our history of racism it makes us feel as if we just can't be racist here in Ireland because we've had to deal with it for so long. Or maybe it's because of the fact that we, as you said, all too willingly point to America and say that it's way worse than America and it's not as bad here. You know, I, I find it funny that we're willing to point to other places when it comes to racism, but when it comes to something like poverty, we wouldn't dare say because poverty is terribly bad in a country like you know, South Sudan, it means that we should stop fighting poverty here. So why do you think we're just so unwilling to reckon with the fact that it is an Irish problem we need to tackle, even though the evidence suggests that that's the case? Yeah, no, I think that's a brilliant question. And it's something that I've been tackling as well. And I think it just goes back to the fact that we're still engaging in these debates to see whether or not racism exists. Do you know, like last year when it happened, like people were very like, I don't know, like it kind of created this sense of like, oh my God, at any time I could be called racist. And it's like, well, if you've done something racist then you should be called out. So it was kind of like we had lived in such a culture where we had excused racism so then people were very fearful of being called out so then of course like when you feel like you've been pushed onto the side you're going to be your first mode of a mode of defense is attack so those are the people who straight away are like oh but like you don't have it as bad and as they say like America is just a perfect scapegoat because we've used that for that long so then again it's like it's that and then there's just that denial and it goes back to like do you know for my um, undergrad I did English and history and like I did Irish history and like again you see people being like do you know like I can understand your struggle because Ireland were colonized too and I'm like yes you know we've all seen those famous paintings of do you know like where you have a black man and an Irish man and they're painted in the ape-like features so like yes we understand that closeness to how Africans and Irish people were described as like the missing link to animals but like the main thing is Irish like within the Irish identity they were able to depart from that they were able to depart and create their own sense of Irishness which inherently was whiteness and that's been challenged along but people are still in that sense of okay, okay yeah we identify but we're also solidifying that we all went through that but it's like but that was in the past and like racism towards minority groups like it's happening now and we can't look at back of those pictures and be like oh yeah at least we escaped that so I think because people are like we feel you we understand you they're like they fail to understand that like there's still a new privilege now that they have and by constantly referring to the past it's just very discouraging and again it's you know BLM happened in Ireland like last year and still in 2021 there's debates being like is there racism so it just it proves to just go backwards and again it just goes back to this whole nature of we've just let it go for so long that it's just going to be having to tear away at it and like really look at the really awkward conversations that we just 
need to like unlearn and I think that's why like there's just not a willingness to do that because you're so comfortable to like make a racist joke and be like it's okay I have a black friend and that has worked for you for years and now you mean to say that you can get um called out you can be held accountable like no your first mode is always going to be defense and until we realize that and then we keep calling out racism where we just live in a society where like it's no longer acceptable those who are perpetuating those racist ideas and those who have that scapegoat of being like oh yeah in the past like we all have that shared identity of being colonized and that shared identity of being called like missing links between animality and humanity then can we like start seeing like no it's a problem and address it in the 21st century and the best way to do that is just holding people accountable and for those who are held accountable instead of being outraged that you called a racist like why not be like what did I do that was a racist action you know like there's just moving away from like that victim mentality of oh god forbid I get called this it's like really tackling like why is it and only then can we really move away from that sense of even like having this conversation of, you know, like asking that question of whether or not it exists. That was such a fantastically articulated uh, answer, Sandrine. And I think um, two points that really shone, on to me, shone out to me, sorry, was, were firstly the fact that um, you referenced how uh, the co commonality in history is by no, by no means an excuse to kind of use to exonerate yourself of the responsibility of addressing the racism that a lot of minorities within Ireland interact with. And, you know, that, in my opinion, should be an impetus. It should be a reason for you to want to tackle racism even more because you're used to its effects. You, you're used to how uh, catastrophic its, its effects and its impact can be. That should urge you to want to go out and ensure that no other community within your nation has to deal with it. So I think we need to start using our, our history as a device of encouragement rather than one of discouragement. And another kind of point that you raised, um, which gets me nicely onto the next point, was the fact that you know, whiteness sometimes is seen as synonymous to Irishness. And I think that's quite problematic, generally speaking. Um, so I, I want to ask you about, you know, the progress we've made here in Ireland, especially on that point regarding identity and racism generally, because I think something that is somewhat ironic is the fact that we here in Ireland have emigrated to many different countries across the world. Like America, for instance, we've established our own communities there, like the Irish American community. And as you kind of touched on there, people were able to depart from their identity to some extent, simply because of the fact that there was a shared race in America. Whereas here in Ireland, you know, if you say I'm black and Irish, you know, that's a pretty emphatic statement because being Irish is one thing and being black in the eyes of many is being another thing. But if we took away the kind of emphasis we place on race and simply saw it as some, something that didn't necessarily determine how Irish you were, you know, then we'd be able to accept people irregardless of their race. So on this point, and generally more broadly when it comes to racism, how do you think we've progressed since the rise of the BLM movement in Ireland? Yeah, I think we progressed to some extent and gone backwards to some. So we progress in the fact that racism is no longer a taboo topic, like you are talking about it. And again, you are engaging in these conversations, not debates on whether or not it exists, but like conversations of, okay, how can let's say like our company become more diverse? How can the curriculum? So like we're seeing positive changes where those in power are like starting to unlearn these behaviors and starting to see that we're like, again, 2021. So whichever spectrum they are should reflect a wider Irish society, which again, does not just cater to white middle men, <laughs> you know, like it does not cater to that. It caters outside. But like the fact, the place that we've gone backwards is when it comes to this sense of Irish identity, like as you stated, do you know, like when it comes to immigration, like when you hear, like I have friends who moved to London, who moved to there and they're so accepted and like, they're so proud to say that. But then like, like if I'm like, do you know, I moved to Ireland from Kenya, it's still like, oh, okay, so you'll always be another, do you know? And like, so there's still that sense of, again, there's no, it's not welcoming in that regards of embracing that duality. So like you're talking about black and Irish, like where again, like it's something that I've struggled with where I was like, okay, once I get the Irish passport, I'll be Irish. And it's like, no, once I get my Irish accent, I'll be Irish. No, once I go to X, Y, and Z. So it's like, what do you want? And then it's something that I was just like, realized it's like, it's all like, again, like just 
the different societal structures that we place it in where again and time time and time again like we just think that to be irish is to be white and again there's no there's no people challenging it the only people which are challenging it challenging it are those which are constantly having to fight to be identified as Irish but like as you stated you know like when if you're saying like okay I'm black and Irish so like you're kind of made choose which one so I think like that's going really backwards like where we're not again like yes Ireland is very new to the different multiculturalism and diversity but then it's not really like you know like we shouldn't excuse that like where we should just still live in a society of like why is it so easy to like embrace someone who came from the uk and has been living here for two years you see them closer to irish than your black neighbor than your polish neighbor again it's just because this idealized sense of whiteness so that really stomps it and makes it just go really backwards where we can't really progress in that but I think like within the educational and different work sector it's starting to happen and people are starting to understand that in order to have diversity like you're not having people to just tick your boxes like you genuinely need to listen to them and listen to their voices the lived experience but when it comes to identity we're still so grounded in that root of Irishness being whiteness so it's a very hard place to really tackle and move away from because when you do move away from it you're kind of like left with being like okay which side do I pick like Irish or black so only by again just engaging in these debates where we don't have a monolithic view of Irishness then only then can we really see the progress because we won't even have to question your again like your Polish neighbor, your Muslim neighbor, your black neighbor when they tell you like I'm from Ireland. Yeah, that was again very well put. Um very well put. And I think you know with race it, because it's a visual facet, it's more off putting than let's say ethnicity. Ethnicity is more so an invisible aspect of who you are. Uh let's say if you come from a place like Europe or a place where people are predominantly lighter skin or where their complexion is not really dark but then once you have that melanin and that darker skin it, it immediately it gets across an image and people can either interpret that image as something that is just negligible and irrelevant and something that doesn't necessarily determine whether you're part of Ireland or not but as you said all too often people are seeing that as something that excludes you from the Irish family and from your stake in the country which is regressive but I think we are taking steps forward as you acknowledge, but there's so much more for us to do. Um, I, I think something also, Sandrine, that is quite apparent from the rise in the BLM movement, not only in Ireland, but across the world, is the American, the USA influence, which would naturally stem from the rise of the BLM movement anywhere in the world, because the BLM movement was first conceived in the USA. And here in Ireland, you can see kind of BLM, American specific terminology being used to articulate racism here in Ireland. And I think taking inspiration from the USA can be quite good when it comes to the fight against racism. But um, you know, I think a serious question that has been raised by some recently is the fact that you know the racism that is contacted and experienced by some in America is very specific and very unique. The history that kind of is the battery of racism uh, that, that keeps it going and, and prolongs racism in America, you know, the, the backdrop and the backstory is very loaded, very heated, and it's filled with a lot of different stories and traumatic experiences for Black people. So the way they interact and deal with racism today is kind of stemmed with that to some extent. So us borrowing the American dictionary to articulate here racism here in Ireland, you know, although it might be useful when it comes to some terms, you know, I, I find that making our own ready-made Irish Pacific thesaurus to talk about the racism that communities face here in Ireland might be useful because expressing it wrongly might see us importing some of the issues, maybe not the extreme issues, but some of the issues and the divisiveness that exists in America. So this is an observation that I that I've, uh, I kind of made recently. So what do you think? Do you think us taking the, a strong kind of American approach to the racism here in Ireland may be good? Or do you think that might have repercussions if it's not done uh, diligently? Yeah, no, I think that's a brilliant question. And yeah, I think if we take that, we're going to be leaving people out. And I mean it in that sense of um, I tutor in like post-colonial literature. And for one of the texts we're reading is Tenehisi Quotes Between the World and Me. I don't know if you've read that. Do you know, and like with that, there it reminds me of a section like where 
uh, when he went to France and he would see how like black people would interact with each other and like they just had no fear so he was like oh like racism exists here so differently than in America and I think that's the way I can see it so like do you know like even if you just look at the core values of BLM like it's calling for specific issues to be addressed within the American system so it's very wrong to like place that into Ireland so like that as I was saying earlier like within Ireland we've had the opportunity to use BLM to again like point out how travelers have been discriminated again against for decades you know and so I think by only saying that okay we're only going to be looking at BLM in regards to black trauma black this black that it's we're just falling trapped into that we really have to look at it and again use it as a backdrop definitely like looking at it and being like these are the different strategies but by engaging in these debates where we're leaving other minorities out we're leaving other people who have faced racism it's just wrong because again like that's not how BLM works in Ireland like we can't like if you just again like simple googling of like the foundations like you know like they want to address racism like but in particular police brutality they want to address x y and z but we don't have that in Ireland like where we're very new to this so it's like we really need to develop our own language we need to develop our own understanding of racism because now like um it's funny because like for sociology we're at the aspect of it like where I'm tutoring on like whether or not race is a social construct and when I ask students like what's your definition of race racism and it's still like oh when white people do this to black people I'm like that's not racism like you know that's not the definition but I've seen it now like when if you go on Twitter and if you see different activists like they're still using that where it's like only we should talk about this and it might but we're like we can't use that because that's America and America is specific like they've had 400 years of slavery we it's different here and again it's we're falling trapped into that where we're cancelling everyone out who's genuinely asking being like why are you leaving these people out when you're talking about racism why are you doing that so I think like use it as a backdrop but we definitely need to develop our own languages we need to develop our own strategy so like when it comes to education like again like doing things like such as word literature if we're doing history like teaching it like yes teach colonialism teach slavery but not in that mindset of these people are victims or these people were like the victors and leave people out such as travelers like you know I've never even learned about them in history and again it's like that's like that's the mistake that we're doing and if we keep going in that direction where we're adapting what America does where only black people can talk about race where only black people can talk about racism then we're just going to be again like in this echo chamber where we're just going to be replicating everything that we're they're doing in America until we see different forms of racism that are happening and then we'll be like oh they actually affect other minorities outside of black people so I think Ireland we the fact that it's so new we really have that chance to develop new strategies, new language, new dictionaries when it comes to racism. Because again, people just don't even know the fundamental explanation of racism. And then we can start tackling it. And again, like where we move away from being like, okay, we were all colonized. No, we, we look at it in a specific Irish context. So that's what we really need as opposed to continuously borrowing from America. Because when we do, we'll end up silencing other voices which all experience racism themselves. Yeah, that was um, just very well put. Um, I think it's sad that we're at a point where it's an intellectually bold and brave thing to do, to iterate here in Ireland that racism is a multilateral issue that can affect a plethora of different people. And I think why this is the case is partly because we're in, like, I'm not going to say indoctrinated because that sounds like somewhat of a pernicious term, but we're taught about racism firstly by the American intellectuals like Ta-Nehisi Coates were, were taught about racism by, which, which is very positive and really good. But uh, when we do that and we take inspiration from America, let's say we, we don't mold it and shape it to and, and squeeze it into the Irish context, like accordingly. Instead, we try to force it rigidly into the Irish context and apply it. And in the process of doing it, it could really break things and hurt things and um, be applied in wrong ways, which may not be good for communities that need to be impacted positively by what many activists and people generally can do by fighting against racism that's specific to Ireland. So I think that's a fantastic point. 
And going forward, I think that really allows us to segue into my next question really well, which is one based on the future. Um, you know, I, I think because racism, it's such a novice conversation here in Ireland, uh, people like you, amazing activists like yourself and teachers and, and thinkers, I think it, it's, it's the responsibility of, of those who are on the front line to steer this conversation in the right direction um, and ensure that the type of approach we take to racism here in Ireland is good for everyone in Ireland, especially the communities impacted by racism. And I personally think, you know, our job is to minimize racism as much as we possibly can. Can we say, well, ever we live in a world where there's no hate whatsoever, racism included? Possibly not, maybe because of human nature. But can we say that we'll, we'll try and it's a venture worth fighting for? Absolutely. And here in Ireland, I think committing to that task, it needs to see us doing that in a way that's unique to the Irish experience. And what I philosophize or dream of when I think of like the utopian Ireland is an Ireland where you know, I can just walk around in the street and see people from diverse backgrounds and be able to call them Irish, be able to interact with them. And where, I don't want to use the term colorblind because it's ha it has its connotations, but where I treat people without regard to race. This would be the ideal Ireland. And yeah, this is what I'd want to see. So I'm going to you know, turn that question back to you. In terms of the future of Ireland and the future of anti-racism activism and the whole kind of rigmarole, what do you hope Ireland to look like and where would you like us to get to? Yeah, no, definitely. <laughs> it's a brilliant question. And I think, yeah, my hope for the future is definitely to move away again from viewing racism as something that only affects one type of like one group of people. I think it's very important to again, like let's just going back to the dictionary of what racism means, like why would we want to be in a world where it's like, okay, so I'm respected as a black woman, but a traveler and I, an Asian person, they're still getting racism. Like, I just don't want to live in that world. I'd rather live in a world that where like racism is confronted in all different multitude of ways. And then the other one is again, to just move away from these discussions or whether or not racism exists in Ireland. So just to kind of, again, tear away at that fear of being called out racist being teared away at that fear of being like, oh, I've been so used to this for so long. Like this is a part of like the, uh, I don't know, the joking culture. This is a part of this, you're removing the fun by just understanding like those jokes are not funny. Like you, that group chat where you're like chatting, uh, um, talking about black people, this people, like it's not funny. So just creating that sense of like, where you're not constantly being like, oh, I'm going to get called racist, where you should be like, I should just be living in a world where whatever I'm doing, whatever actions I'm participating in, whatever group I'm participating in, it has no racism, sexism connotation. Do you know, like it's a very simple thing to do. And yeah, I like, I agree. I don't think, not in my lifetime anyways, that we live in a world like where racism is definitely diminished. But I think that as you stated, by viewing people as just human beings, as opposed to projecting on race, projecting on different stereotypes that you have against people, like by just viewing them as a fellow human being and just, again, learning that in order for like a society to function, like we just all have to get along. And that means that just because you're not racist to a black person does not mean you can project that onto other people. So I think like that's just the future that I'd want, like again, just moving away from that sense of debating on whether or not racism exists. And then again, just because you are okay with one race does not mean that you can go and again project racism and racist ideas onto another onto another so like that's what blm has really shown that you have to just be anti-racist in all the different spectrum not just to black people yeah um once again fantastically put i think i've said that quite a few times during the duration of the conversation but i think that naturally brings us to a close to an end Thank you so much, Sandrine, for partaking in the conversation. I thoroughly enjoyed speaking with you about this topic. I hope that those watching can go out and have similar conversations about racism in Ireland and try and think about how they can contribute to the development and enhancement of the national conversation. So I'm sure everyone enjoyed watching it. If you did, please hit the like button, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. And if you have any opinions as to what Sandrine or I said in the video, let us know in the conversation, uh, sorry, in the comment section. I'll be back with another video very, very soon. Bye.